When should you or can you start lucid dreaming? At what age? Well, first of all, I think you can more or less start lucid dreaming at any age. So the remaining question really is, should you? Should you start lucid dreaming as soon as you hear about it or should you wait till you're a certain age or until you're an adult or what? Well, personally, I think the earlier that you learn to lucid dream, the more proficient that you're going to be later on because you spend more time practicing. It's the same as if you want to learn to play an instrument. If someone starts learning to play that instrument at 13 years old, then by the time they're 30, if they've been playing all that time, they're going to be really, really good at it. On the other hand, if they start learning at 28, then by the time they're 30, they might not be so good. And sometimes younger people can be a little bit more creative about problem solving, so you can sometimes learn to lucid dream a little bit faster. But that said, there is one word of advice that I want to give to younger lucid dreamers that I feel is quite important. And that is that your sleep is very, very important. So I think younger lucid dreamers should approach lucid dreaming very differently to someone who is already an adult. So if you're not an adult yet, and even if you are, if you just turned 18 or something, but you're not, you know, in your mid 20s or whatever, you may still be growing in one way or another. And if you're growing in one way or another, then sleep is extra important because it's not just there to make you feel well rested in the morning. It's also where most of your growth is actually happening, where a lot of your development is happening. If I today were to not sleep for a couple of days, I would feel really, really awful at the end of it. But after, you know, correcting my sleep for a few days after that, I would be back to normal. On the other hand, if someone who's young does that and they don't get sleep for a couple of days, they are basically stunting their growth in a way. You know, you're missing out on an opportunity to grow. And you only sort of have a limited time for your growth and development to happen in because once you're an adult, that's going to slow down and stop pretty quickly. So for this reason, I think it is vital to get proper sleep when you're a child, when you're a teenager, and even when you're a young adult. And what do I mean by proper sleep? Well, every single night you should be getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep. And most nights you should be getting seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep, sleep in which you don't wake up for the entire duration. Because as I said earlier, that sleep is more important to you than it is to me or to someone else older. So how does this affect lucid dreaming? Well, you've probably noticed that a lot of lucid dreaming techniques involve you interrupting your sleep, waking up in the middle of the night. And I really think you need to be careful with that if you're younger, because, you know, if you're interrupting your sleep every single day, then you could be interrupting your growth and affecting that in a negative way. Now, the most important variable is that you're getting enough sleep. So the first thing to look at is your total time spent asleep. So if you are using a technique like, say, mild that has you wake up after, say, six hours of sleep, then ensure when you go back to sleep, you sleep a little bit extra to make up for the fact that you woke up in the middle of your sleep and were up for a few minutes and so on. You know, sleep an extra half an hour or something just to be sure you got enough sleep. If you're finding that trying to practice lucid dreaming techniques is resulting in you not falling asleep or waking up constantly throughout the night or just not getting enough sleep whatsoever, you know, you're maybe only getting five or six hours a night, then you need to stop, period. I would just say stop at this point and go to techniques that don't involve you waking up in the middle of the night because getting enough sleep is vital at that age and I know lucid dreaming is fun and worth doing and for most people your age you should be able to get enough sleep even if you are practicing techniques simply by sleeping a little bit longer but if you find that the techniques are causing you insomnia and causing you difficulty with sleeping then simply don't do those particular techniques avoid them and stick to things like say reality checks or meditation that don't involve you interrupting your sleep now, if you don't have that issue, then you can, of course, still use techniques like mild and wake back to bed that involve you waking up in the middle of the night. You do, however, need to make up for the fact that you were awake and get extra sleep. And I do suggest getting more than the amount of sleep that you lost. Because let's say you wake up after, say, six hours of sleep and you're up for 15 minutes to perform wake back to bed and you go back to sleep for two hours, say so that you've had eight hours total sleep. Well, the thing is, have you really had exactly eight hours total sleep? What about the time when you were kind of groggy and waking up and didn't realize you were awake yet? What about the time it took you to fall back asleep? What about the time it took you to fall asleep in the first place? You might have only got seven and a half hours of sleep, which might be enough, it might be okay, but you know, it's a fair bit less than you thought you did. So I suggest getting a little bit extra. So rather than just going back to sleep for a couple of hours, maybe go back to sleep for two hours 30 or something like that. 
And you might be thinking at this time when I'm saying this, well, this is going to be difficult because I have to get up in the morning for school. Well, if you want to lose a dream, then you need to actually take account of the fact that you're going to have to be spending a fair bit more time in bed. So what that means is going to bed earlier. You can't get away with staying in bed if you have school or work or whatever. So you need to actually make the decision to go to bed earlier. That's a choice that you have to make. You know, if you want to lose a dream, then be willing to go to bed earlier and to go to bed fairly early, in fact. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is interrupting sleep in the first place. The thing is, if you get eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, that is still better than getting six hours of sleep, waking up for a bit and then sleeping for another two hours. Uninterrupted sleep is always going to be better than interrupted sleep. So that begs the question, should you do these techniques that are interrupting your sleep all the time? And I think the answer to that is no. I don't think you should be doing them every single day, day in, day out, if you're younger and you're still growing and so on. My suggestion would be to work really hard at meditating every single day for at least 20 minutes in the evening, ideally for 30 to 40 minutes if you can manage that. Do reality checks throughout the day and take them seriously. Don't just do them to practice them so that you'll end up doing them in your sleep. Do them because you could be asleep right now and not know it because you'll be convinced that you're awake even when you're asleep. So do a reality check now just to check and do them regularly throughout the day for the same reason. Use mantras like you use for mild, but use them at the beginning of the night because even though that's not super effective, it's still something you can do that takes you uh, a couple of minutes of your time and you may as well do it. And, you know, maybe keep those sleep interrupting techniques to, you know, every so often rather than doing them every day. You know, maybe do them a couple of times a week or do them at the weekends and then get lots of extra sleep to make up for it. So instead of getting, you know, eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, maybe you get nine hours of slightly interrupted sleep. Anyway, yeah. So you can lucid dream at any age and I think you should start learning to lucid dream as young as you can. But if you are younger and you're still growing and you're still developing, then you need to ensure you get adequate sleep. So that means, you know, if you find that lucid dreaming techniques are interfering with your sleep, then it is time to stop them. If you find that you're able to sleep okay, make sure that you get extra sleep to make up for the fact that you're interrupting your sleep and try to keep those sleep interrupting techniques to be, you know, occasional things that you do, not things that you do every day. Focus the bulk of your work on things like reality checks and meditation that don't require you to interrupt your sleep. If you'd like to see more advice for younger lucid dreamers and what you should do differently and for some of those techniques that don't require you to interrupt your sleep and so on, then let me know down in the comments below. If you're interested in having a complete step-by-step guide to the entire process of learning to lucid dream from step one when you haven't had any all the way to being in complete control over your dreams and doing anything that you want, then check out my advanced lucidity course. There'll be a link in the top right hand corner and down in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you like these videos, enable notifications as well. Head on over to my Patreon if you want to support the channel. And if you want to keep watching, pick one of the videos on screen, go watch that and I'll see you soon. Take care.